This Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Like the podcast. Nailed it. Would you like to sample some of my nuts? Hello, and welcome back to yet again another edition of Old Man Strength, a podcast of Three Beards Media and brought to you by Revelton Distilling Company. Please go ahead and check them out at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa. I am Tim Johnson, joined as always by Chris Shipley. Chris, how are we doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing even better now that I've poured my Revelton into the glass. Oh, that's a good idea, as opposed yeah. to like in your lap? Just, or, no, I, I just <laughs> usually... I, like the days I had today, I normally just drink straight from the bottle. But I I just say, just, more. You just put a nipple right on the bottle and just, right. and just suckle from it the whole night long. I uh, maybe that... I'd class it up for our guest tonight. Oh, well, that's that's good. Uh, <laughs> that, that's good. Um, how you been? Uh, last podcast, I obviously uh, had a lot on my mind. Uh, but uh, what's new with you? Not a lot. Uh, just uh, getting through my with my mom and, and stuff like that. And... Uh, uh we got back from orlando so we were in orlando for the boys' uh trip with their williams syndrome group so uh i am glad to be home and i think maybe jordan might be getting sick so uh, oh. I, i'm sure we were in a in a covid fest down there i mean a bunch of people hugging each other and everything else so i'm, I'm oh well, fun I'm, I'm hanging out in my basement so i don't get sick Oh, well, that's that's fun. Um, oh, I'll tell you what. I want to jump right in with our guest. Uh, this is a, a astute listeners of the podcast will know that we have we have mentioned uh, this gentleman several times on here yes. before, uh, or at least we have mentioned his hair. Uh, <laughs> well, not <laughs> anymore. <podcast. laughs> I, 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 I just want to know. I did not. I did not say that. Um, no, that was me. Um, no, uh, uh, very excited to have a, a cyclone legend on the podcast. I, uh, Chris, I, Chris, I don't want to steal this, this intro from you. Uh, Chris, why don't you go and introduce our guest? Then? Well, I, I'm super excited to have him on because, uh, as a freshman, uh, in college, uh, I got to watch him play personally. Uh, I was super excited to watch him. Uh, he played almost what five years in in the CFL. Uh, uh, played a little bit for the Jets, uh, is now a successful mortgage broker in California. Uh, the one and only Blaze Bryant has joined us on Old Man Strength. Thank, thanks so much, Blaze, for hopping on. Thank you. Appreciate having me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead, Tim. No, no, I was going to say, uh, I, I made a little, a, a little crack, uh, in, in the intro there, uh, but... Uh, I, I'm just going to get it right out of the way, man. Flat top with a mullet at the exact same time. I don't, I don't know how you pulled off both, both haircuts at the exact same time. Uh, I, do you care to comment? Well, I, I don't know. I just kind of kept growing it, you know, uh, <laughs> I had a wilder haircut in high school and, uh, so I cut that off and then I started with the. With the mullet and the high top, that is just let it go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can only get away with that stuff, like you know, in your younger days. Right. Yeah. No, I. Know, I it's gone. No. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. I'm holding on to the last remnants of a once proud nation of hair. Over <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, yeah. I don't. I, I don't know that you could you could pull off any type of flat top, Chris, and any mullet would just be a little creepy at this point. No, but to Blaze's <laughs> point, like in the mid '80s, I was I was sporting a Jim McMahon haircut, spiked yeah. hair, and everything. I mean, that was that was uh, the way to go. So. I I think you might have had an Ed McMahon haircut, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um. Nice. So. Uh, <laughs> Blaze, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to rip on Chris and then pretend like I didn't say anything and jump right to you. Um, so we we kind of did not do justice for 
uh, your legacy at Iowa State uh, and beyond. Uh, but why don't you go ahead and give our listeners kind of a little brief uh, history of who Blaze Bryant is? Uh, I mean, starting from Iowa State, I went to the Jets for two years. And, uh, you know, I was behind Blair Thomas and them, you know, back in those days. They was always going to ride out the first rounder. So after that, I went to the CFL and I, I played really well there. And um, but I blew my knee out in the second year. So then I, I tried to get it back and uh, I got a trial with the Niners, but they didn't trust my knees. So I had to go back to Canada. And uh, so I played another year there in 95. Then in 96, I went to the Broncos. And again, then I'm behind Terrell Davis. And they pretty much had their running back core solidified. And so I finished up in the CFL and called it a day in 97. So I, you, you come from a, a legacy of that late 80s, early 90s running back, like the, the big eight at the time, right? So you played around the same time as, as Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas, all of these, these yeah. great backs in, in the big eight. Uh, obviously an all American yourself. Uh, what was it like to be part of that kind of that legendary big eight running back? I don't even know what you'd call it. It's, it's the fraternity of, of those, those that late eighties, early nineties running backs, right? Yeah. It felt good. It felt good. I mean, Eric being me, um, God, there was another guy from Oklahoma that got hurt. That was phenomenal. God, I can't think of his name. He passed away too. I can't think of his name, but um, he was great too. Yeah, I mean, it feels good, you know. Um, I'm glad that, you know, that it expanded to the Big 12, and I'm glad we're back, you know, with more teams. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a cyclone for life. So I usually I'll ask this question. We had uh, George Condon on uh, uh, last year, and uh, that era, let, let's be honest, was not a, a heyday for Iowa State. What, what makes Blaze Bryant choose Iowa State? Uh, out of all the choices he could have had? Um, I mean, at a community college, I, I was going to go to, you know, like Miami or somewhere or somewhere in the SEC. And uh, no uh, real Pac-10 teams, you know, were, were even giving me any love, you know, coming out of community college. And um, so my community college coach was like, Blaze, you know, I think you can play anywhere, but you only have two years to play three. So, if you're going to make a decision, go with the team that doesn't have a returning starting running back. So then I, you know, I kind of narrowed it down to where I felt that I could come in and play and not just sit there and be number five or number seven or just never get a shot. Yeah, that's kind of sounds like when I chose my major and I, I just find, <laughs> I just find the closest major I'm I'm closest to and then go for it. That's that's but that I mean that makes sense. You get your playing time and so on. And you played you played exclusively for Walden, right? Yes. So, yep. How was what was Jim Walden like? I, yeah. I would love to be able to talk to him. What was Jim Walden like? Really, really funny. You know, a jokester. You know, definitely hardcore at practice though. But he always had a joke at the end of practice. But um, he was real big on uh, fitness. Like we had to be in shape, and um, we had to know our assignments. Yeah, but just a really, really good guy all around. Well, and so you were you were the only All American on that team, right? Like, yeah. the, the, what uh, Mike Bush was well, like? Who who else was an All American on that team? I think Bush might have been. I think I was gonna say I think Mike yeah. Bush might have been the same year that that, that you yeah. were right. Like, yeah. like there there was a lot of talent on that offense. Yeah, my junior year, we we had talent, you know, offense and defense, and um, we should have won. At least three more games. <laughs> the, we should have we been eight and three or nine and two. The the amount of Iowa State teams in my lifetime that had a that finished, you know, below bowl eligibility, but all of their losses were like one score games, two score game, you know, ten point games, like all of these. I mean, even last year, you look at the Iowa State team. I uh, only one of their losses was a blowout. One was a two score game. All the rest of the losses were one score losses. Like it's, it's a lot of close. You went through that at your time at Iowa state where uh, 
a lot of games where you guys could have been on the cusp of, of, of something great. You're right. We should have beat Minnesota. We should have beat Iowa. We should have beat Oklahoma. And uh, yeah, there's three right there. You know, yep. that makes us nine and two. And uh, but yeah, that I always thought there was a curse with Iowa State. I remember, I want to say it was 2009 or 10. And we were like on the one yard line, first down. If we score, we beat Texas and go to Big 12 championship. Mm-hmm. And I'm on the computer ready to book my ticket. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, goddammit. I'm ready, you know. And first down. All right, that's all right. That's all right. Second down. Okay, okay, we can get in this. Third down. Come on, God damn it. Fourth. Oh, what the hell? I'm still I'm still upset about that. One. No, 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 I, I, uh, I, I remember, I remember that game very vividly. I was uh, at a cyclone bar in uh, in Denver at the time, watching that, and uh, I was very, very excited. And I, and I left that bar all by myself, and I, I walked back to my hotel room, and I just kind of sat there for a while, like it was so, <laughs> it was within, it was within our grasp. I, I still can't get over it. <laughs> I'm not right about it. Push the fucker in. <laughs> so, so obviously, uh, still a very passionate Cyclone fan. What's it like to follow the Cyclones on on the West Coast? I mean, it's great. I mean, uh, this coach has brought us a lot of limelight and uh, a lot of publicity. So, I'm finally getting acknowledged for being a Cyclone. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the gym with my mayor jersey on, you know. People used to frown at me. Now they're like, Cyclones, all right. <laughs> you know? but, yeah, it's good. You know, I mean, we've got Brock Purdy and San Fran, which is, you know, my daughter goes to San Jose State, so she's like 15 minutes away. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it's, it's, it's good. It's good. You know, we got Greece and, and um, there's a McDonald over the Jets. I think your Kohler's still up at the – Ravens, right? Yep. yep. A- a- absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And then Lazard is with the Jets as well. Lazard, and... I think I talk to his yeah. dad all the time. Got a signed jersey from him. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I like that. Nice. So, you know, yeah. Speaking of signing stuff, Blaze, we got a comment here from somebody. I- I- I'm curious if you remember this. Uh, this person says, when I was in college, when Blaze was playing at Iowa State, I knew a young boy from a nearby town of mine. He was a huge Iowa State fan. He had major health problems. Called him up, and he said, stop by, and he signed an autograph for him. He's a classy guy in my book. I remember. Yeah. 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 And I tried to sign as many as I could. Because you know why? I'm going to tell you a little story. Back when I was a kid, I went to the Angel game and Reggie Jackson was there. Mm-hmm. And I'm screaming, got my little sign, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. <laughs> Came over, Reggie, can you sign this? He said, get out of here, kid. So I'm like, that's not even right. I said a couple of things I don't want to say on the cast to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll I fight him in the street if I see him today. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's so wrong for that. You know, and we were all lined up, a bunch of little league kids fired up. And he just gave us the finger, the middle, the middle finger. He did. Wow. So that's why I just felt like if I ever got in that situation, I'm going to sign everything. So, uh, I, you know, you, you mentioned players like Brees Hall or David Montgomery, uh, guys who have been, I think, more than giving of their time. I think, yes. I think certainly the the Matt Campbell era, you you see a lot of 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 that giving. But I think, I think uh, a lot of Iowa State players over the years have been. Um, maybe that comes with just the territory of of, of the humility that has to be with Iowa State. Uh, but it does seem like there's there's something about Iowa State players that seem very giving of their time. I think it's the the culture of it all. Uh huh. You know, I mean, the people are, are really great. The students are great. I think we're all kind of in one big circle of bubble for life. I mean, there's probably sixteen of us that on a group text for the last five or seven years that just talk trash back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, Kevin Lazard is one of them, you know? And, yep. Uh, so um, he gives us most of the play-by-play because he still lives in Iowa. Yep. I don't know. I mean, everyone I've sent a jersey to has signed it for me, except for Brock Purdy. 
<laughs> you know, you, you know Brock, Brock Purdy uh, grabbed coffee with, with my nephew when they were at Iowa State, and they keep on trying to get my nephew to hook me up with it with a Brock Purdy interview. I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, we we were lucky enough to get Brees on the podcast, and I was really hoping uh, we'd be able to get uh, – We'd be able to get Brock on, um, but we have a, like so. You're now, uh, honestly, uh, you're kind of the initial in a long line of Iowa State running backs to have a lot of success, right? It, you f- certainly for my for my lifetime were kind of like the the first one to really show that Iowa State has this ground game. Obviously, Troy came in after you and then we've had a lot of success with a lot of other running backs who have made their name in in, in the nfl anywhere from you know uh, uh even kanae nuangu uh on the vikings like like a lot of running backs that have that have come in and out of this program and some that maybe even haven't had as much success on the next level but it's been a a series of of uh running backs what's it been like for you to sort of be now sitting back as the elder statesman watching all of these guys come through the, that program and have success at the position that you played. Oh, I love it. I mean, I, I, I love the change of it all. I love the grass and no more turf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, you, 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 it, it was, it was an absolute shame that you had to play on, you know, an agricultural school had that garbage field. inside. Oh God. You know, that in Kansas state had to be the two worst. Yeah. And they just stayed at that big Jayhawk on it that was painted, and they would just paint over it. I'd get the ball, I swear I'd run the other way. Because if you landed on that Jayhawk, <laughs> it was like a third degree burn. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's uh, it, what they've done with the facilities and everything is amazing. It, it really is. And the facilities were good when I was there. I'm not going to lie. They weren't that great in Canada. No offense, Winnipeg. But they weren't that great. <laughs> <laughs> And um, the Jets were good. The Broncos had good facilities. But but I would say that Iowa State was right there with them. Yeah. Yeah, so, but now it's amazing what you see. So what what's it like watching, you know, you you've spent the last, you know, however many years I'm not going to I'm not going to say to age any of us, but you spent last amount of years watching uh guys break a lot of your records. Uh, you know, for uh, what you did. What's what's it been like to see guys do uh you know, you, you, again, you set the bar, at least for me, for what, you know, an Iowa State running back should be. And now you've had a chance to see all these guys come through. What's that been like for you to, to see that? You know, it's funny you say that because um, I set a record in Canada uh-huh. uh, back in 94. And somebody broke it in 2009. And they called me an interview. And I'll say the same thing. I am happy for anyone having a good game. Yeah. Anyone. I, I don't really, I don't care about the records or anything like that. You know, if someone is, is having a good game and feeling it, let them feel it, you know, let them show out. I mean, more power to them. I don't, I don't think any record should stand forever. Sure. And uh, I mean, if anyone breaks mine, I'm proud of them. So, so as, as you, you know, you look through all of, all of those players that have come and gone, um, a couple of weeks ago, Iowa State uh, played Oklahoma State. If I recall, when you were in college, uh, Coach Van Gundy was quarterback on the other side of that ball. He was. He was my junior year. What's what's it like seeing someone like that in that position for you? You know, it, it's good. It's good. He, I wish he wouldn't have cut his mullet, but it is good. <laughs> <laughs> He kind of cut a piece of me away when he got that. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm gonna get over that one too. But, uh, it's, uh, it's good. I mean, I think um, it's amazing to go from that, you know, to coaching because the coaching is tough, you know, mm-hmm. and to motivate, you know, some 18 to 23 year old is it, it, is something in itself. And uh, that he knew that he could do that is amazing. I- um, Chris has know. 18 to 23 year olds. He can tell you how difficult it is. The it is yeah, right. Anything. I would love to, I would love to know the playbook to that. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'd be ecstatic if they just clean their rooms. Years and it was tough. <laughs> I'd be ecstatic if they just clean their rooms around here. Right. And now they, and now they got money too. Oh, oh. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. You mine. 
Maybe, uh, maybe from my visor. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he transitioned uh, I- I- into the coaching profession and so on. When your when your playing career uh, ended, what what were your initial thoughts there? What wh- where did you know exactly what you wanted to go do, or or how did you transition into what you did after after football? You know, I didn't have a clue. Like honestly, um, I chased it for so long. I just, I just didn't really have a clue. And then when, when the Broncos cut me, you know, I was already 27. You know, you know 28 for a running back is old. All right. And um, so I just so let me go finish up and try to figure out what I want to do, which nothing came to my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I came home. And uh, I started working at this track and field company called Venue Athletics in Torrance. And um, I loved the job, but I knew it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. And they weren't paying me shit either. Bro. I mean, I wasn't no shit. Iowa State was paying me more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so uh, a buddy of mine, you know, he owned his mortgage company and he's been recruiting me since I was 18. And so finally, I was like, all right, let me see what he's got to say. So at 28, I went to go work for him. And uh, by the time I was 34, I started my own company. Nice. Nice. So so you've been you've been in, in, in the mortgage game uh, ever since. Yes. Um, I, what what has that been like as kind of your it, it really is, it you know, it's a second career. Um in a lot of ways. What, what has that been like for you? I mean, it's good. I mean, I, overall, I, I, I think I've been very successful. You know, uh-huh. I've had a couple of bad years, you know, 2008. But I've always uh-huh. found a way to, 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 to slip and move around it. And uh-huh. um, I used to I used to just do mortgages. That's all sure. I did. And uh, 2008, um, I got a contract with Citibank and Nation Star, and I started selling their foreclosures. So then I stopped just doing mortgages and I opened up another line uh, with real estate agents and called it Brimus Properties. And that kept me afloat. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, now it seems like we're going through another transition. So, I mean, we'll see, but I, I do feel, you know, Something had to give, especially out here. I mean, you know. Yeah. People just no one can just afford a million dollar condo, you know. Just, <laughs> right. You know? I, no, I, yeah, I know. Hey, I think about it. I, I, I bought a house this this past spring because uh, I'm nothing if not good with timing and and shows <laughs> when interest rates were terrible to do that. Um. Uh. And housing out, out here is is in Minneapolis is certainly uh a, a challenge in and of itself, but. California has to be uh, like, I, I, I don't know how that's sustainable for anyone trying to make a living to ever own a home. Uh-oh. Hold on a <laughs> I lost you guy. You there? Yeah. Where'd you go? Are you? Yep. You here? It went, it went, it went blank. It went, where'd it go? <laughs> this this is a a very quintessential old man strength That's moment right. where our guest is an old man who can't figure out. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. We were just saying that's a that's a perfect uh, segue for old man strength because that was a total old man move, not knowing how to work. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got limitations to what I can do. <laughs> so, so he so, sells mortgages. He doesn't. He doesn't uh, work on yeah, computers. Yeah, his absolutely. job is mortgages. So, so you know, that's so, what they uh, used to tell me when I worked at Wells Fargo at the help desk for home mortgage. I we'd get these calls, and these people would have no fucking clue how to use their computers. And our bosses would be like, "We didn't hire them to work a computer. We hired them to sell loans." Your job is to help them work their computer. So, <laughs> so I get it. Yeah. So, so uh, Blaze, I, I, I wonder, like, obviously your life isn't just defined by football, but football is a, is a big point of who you are, and it's a, a lot of who made you who you are. Uh, what 
what lessons do you think you got from from playing uh, uh, competitive sports that that you've taken with you into the mortgage industry? I mean, well, you know, back in our day, I mean, you know, when you played sports, it was yes, sir, no, sir. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right? It was it was military, you know, and uh, you know, sitting on a knee, holding hands, saying, "Our Father, Lord in heaven." <laughs> you know, but it, it's uh, definitely discipline. You know, just because of the way it was back in those days, and um, and just you know, just how to compete. And, yep. you know, just keep going. No matter good times, bad times, just keep going. I think um, veterans and, and and athletes have a certain creed about themselves of worth ethic. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing that football taught me was worth ethic and have a short memory. You know, because sitting around crying ain't going to do nothing for you. So you got to pick yourself up because when you fumble – and I fumble a lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you're walking out, it just feels like the whole stadium is staring at you. And they probably are. And you got you gotta get it out. You gotta get it out of your brain. Yeah. You know, and get back out there and, and, and try to make up for it. Because I, I'm gonna tell you something. Whenever you fumble, they always score. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, they, why can't they just kick a field goal? They always score. You know, now I feel like I, <clears throat> I owe the team seven points because I let the rock on the ground. Yeah. So we had Coach McCarney on last year and asked him this question. And what you just said kind of reminded me with the transfer portal and how it's so easy now to transfer out of a situation. Uh, I'm curious what your thoughts are because you, you talk about, you know, having to tough it out and, and, and dealing with adversity. Do you think that the transfer portal helps kids get out of that now and not necessarily stick it out and work harder when they can just, if, if things aren't going their way, they can just up and move? Or are you uh, somebody that thinks the transfer portal is good for college football? I like it. And not for the reasons that a lot of kids are doing it, mm-hmm. but let's say I went to Fresno State. Mm-hmm. But in my brain, I want to play in the in, in the Big Eight, mm-hmm. and I have a great year at Fresno State, and obviously I shouldn't be here. Yep, they they missed it, you know. Yep, like how did Josh Allen get to Wyoming? I don't know. It just you know he he, he could have transferred out. Yep, yeah, and um, I like it for that. I don't I don't like it, you know. I'm not playing, so as a freshman, so I'm going to transfer. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, Burroughs, I like. You know, he he gave it at Ohio State. They just weren't going to play him. Yeah. So he had to go where he could play. Yeah. And, I mean, basically the same thing happened to me in the NFL. It was like it wasn't that they were better than I was. They just wouldn't play me. You know, they just wouldn't give me the ball. So, so obviously, as you see, when Canadian gave me the ball, I'm breaking records again. So that that was that was one thing I wanted to ask because I know that you've brought this up in the past. Uh, the NFL is as much politics as like the corporate world is, right? That it's not about who's the best running back, who's the no. fastest, who's the strongest, who's the whatever. Uh, sometimes it's that who catches the coach's eye the right way, or who has the most team connections or whatever like like help help explain to me because we've had other former nfl players and current nfl players on the podcast before i uh, it's a dynamic that i think uh, the casual fan doesn't necessarily understand like what that what goes into making a roster or making a team or or any of that yeah i mean it's obviously it was the worst time i've ever had playing football mm-hmm. it was racist it was segregated. It was all blacks on one side of the locker room, whites on the other. Mm-hmm. When you went out, you went out with all blacks. <laughs> you know? And uh, maybe that's me from the West Coast. You know, I'm, I'm different than that, you know? Sure. But, you know, first, second round rules. You know, you first, second round, you can do whatever you want. You know, you behind that, they're looking to cut you. Yeah. I mean, and unless somebody gets hurt, you're not getting in. 
I mean, look at Brock. I mean, let's just call it how it is. I was just yeah. I was gonna say, right. say Bro- Brock Purdy is a great example of that. Is that he is a seventh round pick, and everyone wants to call him a system quarterback, and he's not good enough, and he's not whatever, yada yada yada. Trey Lance was was a first round pick, and everyone's like, oh, he never got his fair shake, he never got his due, he never whatever. But he worked in the same offense. He worked with the same coaches. He worked with the same yeah. everything. And it, and literally, if like if you were picked early, everyone wants to, wants to give you the benefit of the doubt. And if you're picked late or signed as an undrafted free agent, or whatever, you're not given a fair shake. And so it's not even a matter of what you're doing when you're at camp. It's about what you what expectations came when you came into camp. Yeah. Is, that, is that fair? Yes. Because I've wrecked every camp I've been in. Yeah. I mean... And the let my my camp in the Broncos was so good. I, I was like, it was like probably God, two thousand maybe. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And um I ran into a couple of players at the mall in Vegas. And they go, they put a tape together on how to do things the right way. And they said the tape is only maybe ten plays. You're ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, stuff like that. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, you're handcuffed. You know? Well, like, the, the well front office, I, the, I, I think it might be office, ego, too. Yeah, the front, the front office doesn't want to admit that they made a that's, mistake. Right, that's yeah. exactly what I was going right? to say. Right, yep. There's too many egos. That's why That's why there, you, you have pundits and stuff on TV now trying to find a reason to still knock Brock down because they don't want to admit that they were wrong and that they missed out on uh, on something. And, and I, can, I remember uh, going into his junior year, there were mock drafts that had him in the top 10. Yeah. Yes. And then all of a sudden he's not worth seven rounds of, of draft choices after he won the Fiesta Bowl. That's, yeah. that's crazy to me. Yeah. But can you, can you imagine literally any other industry in the world where people are sitting there judging who you hired and when you hired them in the hiring process? Like, <laughs> they treat you the way they treat you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like in the Jets, all the, the running backs were black. Mm-hmm. And we had a black coach. They called us the running blacks. Oh my god! I mean, it, it was it was terrible, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was almost relieved to get cut. You know, it was just it was terrible, you know. And but then the, you know then you start having self doubt because I'm like you know 23 years old. Yeah. And uh, so then I go to Canada, and um, this guy named was Michael Richardson, and he was like. Rookie of the year, the, the year before. I'm like, how do I keep getting myself in these situations? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the guy could play. I'm not even gonna lie to you. He could play, you know. And um, so you know, I'm I'm not getting much run, and there's only two preseason games. Yep. And so the second one, he gets hurt. So I run out there. I'm like, all right, Blaze, what you gonna do, man? You know, you got your shot. And you know, but we haven't really ran it in two years. <laughs> so <I started laughs> myself, you know, and uh, so I ended up having like a you know 115 yards and I think two two or three touchdowns in the second half. And then I I open up the season and uh, against Calgary, I met Doug Flutie. Sure. Okay. And uh, so um, I think I ran for like 81 yards and caught for like. 61 and a touchdown and I was feeling good about myself and the paper came and I got ripped apart oh, he's got a- <laughs> Michael, Richardson. Well, I- Michael Richardson better get healthy oh Michael Richardson and uh, so I'm sitting there like fuming you know because I was I ain't played in a while I, I felt good and um, and I'm being used differently too and uh, next game I'm player of the week and then the next game, they give me the ball twice. <laughs> they say, well, you didn't do as well as you did before, so we'll go with Mike. I said, just tell me you want Mike back in, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so it was kind of crazy, you know, my, at my first year in Canada. And, um, you know, they cut me because they didn't want to pay my salary. So they thought that I wouldn't clear waivers and they could sign me for less money. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders picked me up. Cause that was a team I beat in the in the preseason game. Yeah. So remember Stewart from uh, Iowa? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. He got hurt, so they needed a running back. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I go there in the plane ride there. They worked out a deal to loan me to Saskatchewan for two games. So I play there for two weeks, come back to Winnipeg, and then they make me the designated import. So what that means is in Canada, it's like half Americans, half Canadians. Mm -hmm. But one guy can be the designated import, and then you pretty much play every position. Yeah. So I was like wide receiver, linebacker, running back, everything. And uh, then he he just cut Mike after the end of the season and told me don't make him look bad. <laughs> yeah, the rest, was, <laughs> the rest was history. <laughs> so so, so that, that makes me think of two questions. The first one is um, I obviously uh, – Brees is in an interesting situation in New York. Uh, he's sharing. Not only was he already sharing carries going into the season, but then they brought in Dalvin Cook here from Minnesota, who I'm not sad to be missing. Frankly, I, the Vikings have their own issues. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> uh, we don't got that kind of time, Tim. Chris is a Bears fan, so he can just shut up. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but not only was Brees already having to fight and then coming off of injury and, and, you know, we had talked to him after uh, uh, his injury and how rehab was going and we knew he was going to be ready to go. But then he even has these great games. And then like the very next game, they're giving him like four touches, right? Like he's going through that exact same scenario. So I, I don't know, like, you know, if you have any relationship with any players, but like what, what advice would you give to someone like Brees Hall in that situation? I mean, just keep your head down and just keep running. Because when, the lowest punch that I got in my career, it always came back to the same thing. Blade, just this, this run. You mm -hmm. know, stop thinking and just run. You know, because, I mean, that league is, 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 is so cutthroat. I mean, like Jeff Garcia got in because Steve Young got a concussion and drunken yep. man sucked. Yep. Oh, so yeah. He's, he's my boy from, he played in Calgary. Yep. So he's my boy to this day. And uh, I mean, he was balling at the 49ers. Yeah. And they got rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, all I can say is just, just keep your head down and play because you never know what they're thinking or going to do, but they're going to ride with that first rounder until he rides himself out. Yep. Yeah. Like they want, the first rounder make a mistake. So I feel they don't have to tell the owner that they made a mistake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, it goes back to, yeah. to Chris's point about ego is like at the end yeah. of the day, uh, they've, they've made a, a this. Well, I mean, you see that like in literally everything, the, the amount of bad processes at, at a job that I've ever had to put up with because someone didn't want to admit that they made a bad SOP or whatever. Like it happens all over the place. Right. It just gets amplified in that. Um, but also the, the other question I had, right? So you went and you, you found success in, in the CFL, another cyclone running back after you and Troy Davis, uh, also found a lot more success in the, in the CFL than the NFL. What do you think is the difference for guys like you? Cause you guys, uh, maybe not exactly similar style running back, but, but kind of same vein. What do you think was the difference in the NFL and the CFL for both of you guys? Well, you know, it's funny because I, I was always a really good receiver. Uh-huh. But I guess, you know, going through the 80s, they just like to feed it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you pop one, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, hey, that, that, that that's the time of the eye formation, right? That that, yeah. lo that long forgotten formation. So, so, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and when I got to Canada, you know, they put smaller pads on me, you know, and flanked me out and wired out the slot and everything else in the world. So sometimes I'd have 110 yards receiving and, 60 rushing mm -hmm. you know they just they had me doing a lot of things that i didn't do before and you know when he, he would put me in motion and he'd say if the, if the linebacker runs out there with you two things are gonna happen you're gonna beat him or he's gonna tackle you <laughs> and I, i'd never seen the game like that yeah Sure. You know, like everything was was misdirection and trying to get a mismatch. Yeah, and it's basically what they do now in the NFL. I was gonna say it. it, <laughs> it that that does not sound like '80s, early '90s NFL to me, but that sounds exactly like 2010s NFL to me. 
Yeah, they they did me the same way they're doing McCaffrey now. Sure. Yeah. And 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 that's a part of my game that I only knew was there, but no one ever used it. Yeah, for sure. You know, and um, it's funny. In high school, they threw the ball at me three times. I scored three times. <laughs> but you know, he uh, his name is Cal Murphy. He's a football genius. Uh huh. And he just knew what guys could do, where to place them, how to challenge them. Old school as hell, though. I mean, sure. old old school, you know. But uh, real Vince Lombardi type. But he, he knew his shit, though. He really did. You know, he had me blocking punts, everything. Nice. You know, he, he just he knew his game. And uh, rest in peace, but he, he, he was a great coach. Do you sometimes look at the at the offenses now that they're using and think, man, I clean right now? Yeah, it's froze. Can you hear oh me? yeah, yep. Chris, yeah. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chris, Sorry, Chris. Chris froze for a second, but he was saying, "Do you look at defenses now and think, man, I would clean up?" Yes. And the way the <laughs> offense and the way the offenses are set up now, and the spread, and constantly in the shot, things like that. Yes. I mean, actually, I mean, my senior year at Iowa State, I asked Walden to let me play quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, how'd that conversation he, go? He didn't like it, but mm-hmm. I'm like, we had Sherman Williams, who was another good running back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I wanted to get him on the field. So I said, well, let's let's just get like 10 or 12 plays, you know, that I could come in and they can't just key on me my senior year. Because a lot of things that happened my senior year is like there were two guys following me everywhere I went. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, yeah, it completely it completely changes that, and it's been interesting to see how much the the NFL has migrated to running back by committee, right? Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been it's only been what I'm gonna say ten years, but I realize I'm old. It's been a lot longer since they've migrated to running back by committee. You haven't had like single starters since probably like the Sean Alexander era, which to me still feels like yesterday. But anyway, uh, just the idea that that you have all these running back by committee. Uh, they expect there to be two to three guys to carry that load. It's very different. It's very rare to see. I mean, maybe if you're the Dolphins to score, you know, you know, have a thousand yards a game and stuff like that, that you get, you know, multiple guys rushing. But back in the day, like in the, in the big eight, when you were playing two guys with a hundred yards rushing in the same game was not that no. unheard of. It wasn't a big deal. No, no, that, that would that would have never happened, you know. And I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of the coaches mm-hmm. have gotten a lot younger, mm-hmm. and they definitely studied some some CFL. Sure, <laughs> and yeah. how to use somebody that is talented like this this guy B. John Robinson, He's another yeah. one, you know. But back in my day, you wouldn't know he could do anything he can do. Yeah, you know, he would just be back there getting fed. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there there was there certainly wasn't a wildcat. Uh, mm-hmm. Offense where you're seeing guys, you know, a lot more creative creativity in the backfield. I think than, yes. than you would have had before. And so. I mean, and you know, back in our days, you know, them, them steroid days. I mean, them linebackers were huge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, flank me out and see if you can run with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you, when you look at it, how good it could have been. You know. Yep. It could have definitely changed the game. I mean, it would definitely slowed Bosworth and those guys down. For sure. Yeah. And come at you. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Blaze, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to grab a word from our sponsor. I want to get back and I want to talk a little bit more about how the game has evolved, what you've noticed over the years, uh, the good, the bad, those types of things. So, we're going to grab a word from our sponsor at Revelton Distilling Company, and then we'll be right back to get a little bit more thoughts on on the evolution of the game. All right, thank you. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. 
Welcome back. Uh, in case you had fallen asleep, because I'm very boring over the last uh, half hour. So this is old man strength. Or if you've stumbled upon this in the middle uh, of this, uh, thank you very much. Please go ahead and check out our sponsor, Revelton Distillery at Osceola in Osceola, Iowa, 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa. Uh, it's funny. I, I up here it's Osceola in Osceola, Wisconsin, and Osceola Street here, and I don't know the difference between Osceola and Osceola, so I always screw them up. It's just like Nevada <laughs> and Nevada. I don't understand yes. the, the the difference. Um, so uh, Blaze, before the break, uh, I I kind of teased that. I, what? So you watch the game evolve, whether that be into a multi back system and a spread offense. Uh, a lot more creativity and play calling. What do you think are kind of like the biggest changes that you've been excited about? And what are the things that you probably lament the most about what's changed in the game? I mean, I think a lot of the, the multi-back system is basically, you know, in our day, you know, if you pulled yourself out, tapped, because you were tired, they would, they would call you soft. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of the ego stuff, that we had to go through trying to be a tough guy sure. when you actually needed a blow, you know, where you actually, you know, needed to go out, you know, yeah. sure. sure. Um, it's gone. And I, and I do like that. Yeah, um, it it kind of reminds me in baseball where you, uh, uh, the idea of a starter going more than five innings, like if, he, if a starter was done after five innings, you would have said he was, it wasn't a successful start. Now that's yeah. like, if a starter goes five innings, you think, Holy, like, how do they do that? That's already amazing. Like, it just changed what, what people think about their health. Exactly. Exactly. Like, we did, we beat each other up so much just in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I think now they've kind of loosened up on that. And you don't have to be a superhero anymore and, you know, play when you're, you're seeing stars and everything else. <laughs> and, uh, like, you know, I would, I, would just lay, I would just lay there until it stopped circling. Yeah. You know, and then I would get up. You know, I wait for the rep. 21, get up. Oh, is it that? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking about when my friend Brad got knocked out in, in high school football and he did not know where he was. And then we played him the next quarter. And I was like, thank God he played for a two and six team. Otherwise, I don't know what we would have done. Like, like literally just the, the, the idea that you had to sacrifice your health for God knows what at the time. Yes. I mean, really, that's kind of the reason I quit. <laughs> you know, the, the game plan was I was going to play in Canada until I was maybe 30 mm -hmm. and then figure it out. But the last game, you know, I I was going out for a pass and I took one right there. Mm -hmm. And I was out on my feet. And then I just collapsed. And we, the guy that hit me was out and I was out. And then I told you I had that old coach that was crazy. Yeah. And uh, I just heard his voice, kept screaming, like, is he ready yet? Is he ready? And I was doing <laughs> smelling smoke. And uh, he's like, well, how fucking long is it going to fucking take to get ready? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, where the fuck is my helmet? God damn, you know? <laughs> and, and that's the last I remember. Yeah. You know? And uh, I remember, like, sitting in front of my locker, and a guy came up and said, man, you got knocked out, came back running like Roger Craig. <laughs> I was like, yeah, really? You know? And I ended up scoring a game winning touchdown. Don't remember shit. Ugh. And it was a good 50, 60 yard drive. Don't remember. And they gave it to me like five or six times. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually standing out there. They were jumping on me. Don't remember it all. Yeah. I saw the film like, oh, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so so yeah it, as much as like people were able to have success like one of the good things now is that they're a little bit more conscious of people's obviously uh everything we know about cte that we didn't know back when you were playing right um but not just that i mean this you know you can't run a 60 yard bomb you know full speed with, with, with a brother chasing you and come back and do it again and do it again and not need a blow. Back in Harley, they didn't want yeah. to give you a blow. Sure, sure. I mean, they barely gave us water, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, it was tough. So, I mean, I've seen that evolve, but just, you know, opening up the playbook uh -huh. and finding these coaches now that know what every player's good at doing 
instead of trying to make a player do something he's not good at doing and then saying he sucks. Yep. Yep. You know, like, you know, some of these guys are just outside speed rushers, mm-hmm. not run stoppers. But in our day, they would call him a pussy, you know? Sure. sure. Mm-hmm. You know, in this day, he's a superstar edge rusher. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, so just mm-hmm. things like that that, that, that evolved and it changes is what I really like. I like the different formations. I like the snap counts. Even though I feel there should only be two snap counts. On one <laughs> and two snap counts. I don't need on three. I got enough shit in my mind anyway. You know? but, <laughs> sure. But like yeah, I don't know that you know the positions have changed. Like like yeah. there like people didn't talk about what a Mike linebacker was back in the eighties, right? Yeah. You know, like like it's become so specialized. And then you've also seen, you know. Tight ends are are wide receivers now. There you go. Yeah, you know what I mean. Found out what a guy can do. Yeah, back in yeah. the day it was just Kellen Winslow. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, and, and and now you put all the basketball players as tight ends. Right. You know, <laughs> you know what a guy can do and his talent. You know. Yeah. And I mean, back in the day, if you couldn't fit what they wanted you to do, you were done. You might not get another shot. Okay, so. Crazy. So that's that's what you've enjoyed seeing in the evolution of the game. Uh, my second half of that question: uh, what what about the change in the game do you think is is the most challenging for you to to see over the years? Targeting. I can't. You stand and everybody else. <laughs> You're trying to get the, the the motherfucker down. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> you any way you get this bastard to the ground, get his ass down. <laughs> You know, I, I don't understand. This guy makes a move, and my helmet hits his helmet, and I'm ejected. Are you crazy? Yeah, I, we I all mean, know what a dirty what a dirty hit is. We sure. all know. You know, I've done a few. You it, know, it, we, we all know. You know, kick him out for that. But this is a guy trying to get somebody down, just playing hard. I don't like it. Literally, yeah. just the physics of what it takes to make a tackle seems right. almost impossible to not. Have right. helmet to helmet contact, right? Like, because the other the other option is that I'm going for his knees, which is also going to be called a penalty. So, like, right? Yeah, like I I don't I I get. Yes, you're right. There are dirty. I feel like targeting is similar to like in the NBA with flops. If you just don't reward the, like the bad behavior, you don't have to have a rule against the bad behavior, right? And and again, we we know what a dirty hit is. Back in our day, coach would tell you. You might as well catch it. You'll get hit anyway. But coach, it's an uncatchable ball, you know. <laughs> and yeah. you get up getting your feet take that, or you on a ball that's five feet over your head, you know. That's a dirty hit. But back in our day, that was legal, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that's gone, you know. But there has to be something, you know, where if a guy's just trying to get somebody on the ground, you know, and you happen to lean this way when he's shooting that way, and you you, you hit your hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's that's the one I really can't stand. Okay. Well, nobody knows what it is. Nobody no, knows it's not consistent. I, no, no it's nobody not knows what it is. Uh, is it? I mean, to your point, it's so subjective that one one guy's eyes might think completely different. I mean, we we don't know what any rule in in football is anymore. We don't know what a tuck is. We don't know what a catch is. We don't know what target. Like, <laughs> We don't know what pass interference is. Yeah. All we know is don't touch that quarterback. Whatever you do, yeah. leave that motherfucker right. alone. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. You know like, he's got the ball, just hold him up. The uh the the series that has forever changed my opinion of sports, and I can I can literally tell you the game where my opinion of sports as a fan i've never been a, like a blame the refs guy like i i don't want to be an official like i i have a hard time judging anything around me during the day right like i don't know if i beat that that yellow light into a red light or not like like i'm like i'm terrible at just judging those things i do not want to be an official but uh the one game that i can tell you forever changed and it's and it, it's sad it took me this long but alan lazard against kansas state 2017. 2017. As you say, I know this this lives in Chris's <laughs> because like literally you look at everything. He's literally being hugged in the yard. The ball is like 10 yards away. Very catchable ball. And it happened twice on the and that 
was a huge difference. And for me, that's when I finally went, you know what? I just need to accept that, that like, I don't know what any rule is anymore. Like none well, of the, the, none of them. And makes... they, they picked the flag up. Yeah. That's what slays yes. me about that play is they threw the flag and then picked it up. Yeah. So yeah. They clearly it... thought at the time it was a foul. True. But you don't know the curse of Iowa State. <laughs> please, please. I, 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 know. I mean, I haven't lived it like you have, but I've you seen it. I haven't seen the whole process. In- <laughs> yeah. Iowa State has always gotten the worst calls. I don't give a damn if it's basketball, softball, volleyball, right. yeah, right. football. They're not going to call it for it. That 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 field goal against I, uh, Ohio this year that was very clearly through that they that they didn't call the Jamie Cole uh, uh, field goal against Alabama in Shreveport will forever live in infamy. Obviously, Seneca was that in. Was it. Good. We all we all can agree that Seneca was in. Uh, all of Jeremiah those George got that fumble on the goal line against Texas. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I. I so many of these things that that stick out in I want to say recent memory, but even those in in the last twenty years. Uh, but you know, I, I my parents went to Iowa State. I've been a Cyclone fan for forever. I can remember so many of those calls, and you hate to say that there's a curse, but also there there is a legitimate like Iowa State just isn't going to get. Yeah, I just I just you know. Campbell has brought a lot of good publicity to us, but I think if we don't flat out just wear a team out mm-hmm. and beat them by 20, 30, if it's close, we're losing. We're not That's, getting the call. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's tight, it's going, it's going to Oklahoma, it's going to Texas, it's, it's not going our way, it's going to Iowa. It would have not been. <laughs> Kansas getting a phantom layup in the middle of free throws? Right. <laughs> And the fact that, like, to this day, no, like, even, like, if you talk to, like, honest Jayhawk fans, be like, yeah, we got away with one. But some people are like, no, no, that's just how basketball is. Like, no, that's not how that goes. Like, like literally. No. So, Blaze, I know I know you watch not just Iowa State football. I know you watch Iowa State sports. I know that you're out on the West Coast, and maybe you don't get to see as many Iowa State games, and you don't get to make it back here as much as you'd like to to, to Iowa State games. Um, But... You do follow Iowa State sports. What's it's been like as you've watched? But because uh, I mean, frankly, uh, since your your time here, you were on the ground floor of, you know, the end of the Walden era, going to the McCarney era, going in, into Paul, like all. Let's ignore Gene Chizik. Uh, all of those other things, but also in basketball, yeah. right? You were here when Johnny Orr was creating Hilton yeah. Magic, right? Like you've been here as part of Iowa state is at the forefront of kind of a golden era of Iowa state. What's it been like for you to watch the progression of Iowa state athletics, not just football. Oh, I love it. I really do. Um, I'm drawing a blank now. I shouldn't I hope he's not watching, but the coach before Campbell uh, brought a lot Paul of Rhodes. Paul Rhodes. Rhodes. Coach Rhodes. Yeah. 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 That's my main man. I love him to death. Yeah. And uh, he brought me back in 2011 and um, they had me out, like, after the first quarter, they put me on the field and everything else. And we were playing Oklahoma State that was ranked, like, number two. Uh-huh. Well, that was the night that Jeff Woody scored the touchdown. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Damn, near, I damn near died that night. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we, please, we I, had, I had tickets <laughs> we, to that game. My wife made plans to go to the zoo in Omaha, and I couldn't go. I, oh yeah, my god! I watched it. I watched it from my basement here in in, in Minnesota. Uh, and my wife at the time was an Iowa State grad as well. And I thought I was going to burn my house down. I was so excited. Oh, like, I don't. <laughs> I was on the sidelines, and they won. And I ran out there, and I was hopping around. Next thing I know, I'm surrounded. I'm like, oh my God, if you fall, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember in your era going and grab and trying to grab a goalpost and maybe take it to Lake Laverne. The, the stadium was a yes. little bit more open then, right? I, yeah. I, I, I do I do recall uh, a couple of goalposts stealing going to Lake Laverne. You can't do that now. Uh, what do you think was the, the craziest Iowa State football win at, at, at the time, Cyclone Stadium, right? 
was, yes. Yeah. That yeah. was the best I've ever been because we were getting destroyed. Yeah. It was like 25 to three at halftime. Yeah. And we were making an arrangement to go back to West Des Moines and start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boys were like, you know, all right, if, if they put another you know, touchdown, make it 32 to three, we're out of here. I'm like, cool. Right. And then <laughs> Iowa State scored. Then we, then we tied it, went in overtime. Yeah. Then I almost died on the field. <laughs> <laughs> What, and I had like a wool trench coat on and shit. I'm like, oh god! <laughs> don't, do don't get that excited and run out there. It's frightening. It's what, what's 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 your favorite non-football Iowa State memory? Who's got to be March Madness? Yeah, I've had some good runs in March Madness. Starting out with Marcus Pfizer. Yep. Um, I remember in 2014 we beat North Carolina in March Madness. I've been in Vegas a lot watching March Madness. That's why it's so good to me, you know. <laughs> you know, this drunk, you know. Well, 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 you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, you March Madness and uh, God, um, we lost. We did, but I went to the to the Big Twelve Championship game in 2020, that COVID year. Oh yeah. At Jerry's World. Yeah. And we came out flat. You know, the first half, but we was balling the second half. I'm going to say, that that <laughs> became a very good game at the very end. Yeah, that I was mean, a good one. I mean, you right know? down to the very end. It was a lot of fun. And uh, because of cold, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I had great seats. I mean, like, literally, I felt like the, the Cyclones were, like, right in front of me, you know? Well, yeah, I, well, and and you, you were, you were playing a, at football at Iowa State at the end of kind of like that that Jeff Grayer, you know, that type of era getting into, you know, but really from like, like Jeff Hornacek, Barry Stevens, Jeff Grayer uh, into like justice, Thigpen, all of that transition. There was a consistent big eight play. You, you can't go into Hilton and, and lose type of thing. Yes. As a, fo- as a football player, did you get, did you get to go to many basketball games? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I rock the mayor's jersey. <laughs> I'm serious. Like at all my Iowa State functions, I rock it. When they played UNLV, I flew out there. And had my- <laughs> you know? If you look at my Facebook, you will see that jersey. I see you know? it. I, yeah, when you friended me the other day, I was like, "Is that?" <laughs> that Whatever I wear, they go. That's the mayor's number. I said, "Of course I know that." I <laughs> on, baby. Uh, he's dead to me now. When he uh, said that he was finally home when he took that Nebraska oh, job. Whatever. Oh, whatever. 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 Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm my, not right. My, my, my uh, Blaze is on my side. Yeah, uh, my. It's not my, right. My, my, so my, my high school basketball jersey was 14 yeah. for Jeff Hornacek. I like I, I learned Jeff Hornacek, the guy that that was a passer, a pass first guy through all of his his big eight career, got to the NBA, completely changed his game to be a a, a dagger three point shooter. That that seems to be a thing that Iowa State bat. By the way, that that's a thing Iowa State basketball players go to, right? Like George Ning was an all around basketball player, but he's he's a dead eye three point shooter. Yeah. Fred Hoy- Fred Hoiberg was an all around basketball player in the big eight. Got to the NBA, turned into be a dagger three point shooter, right? Jeff Hornacek, I led the Big Eight and assist, like set the Big Eight record for assists. He was a pass first guy. Yeah, led the NBA in in three pointers. I don't know what it is about Iowa State basketball players when they get there, they just hone in on on that sharp shooter thing. I uh, is there something that that changes between college and pro sports that just changes your your approach to the game in general? I definitely coaching. You know, I mean, like I'm saying, I did not know. I mean, you know, back in my day, they, they told me to run a flat. I run up five yards, make a right. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know how to set somebody up running a pass route because I was never really a, a receiver. I would catch a screen, a swing, or a flat. Mm-hmm. Um, when you get to pro, they want they want you to run a route like a receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think like that makes you learn more about your game. I mean, in Canada, I mean, he basically made me go over there and, and work with the receivers against defensive backs, you know. And for you know, twenty-three year olds never done this before. You know, you got to pick it up quick. And I think when you get pro, just 
there's so many different coaches that you know there's something you can do and hone in on your skill. I think that's where they, they can pull it out of here. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, a high school coach is just like, you know, the the, the science teacher. I mean, what the fuck does he know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, oh, I'll oh, tell you right now, oh, the high school coach we got doesn't know shit. So <laughs> <laughs> he's the most hated. He's the most hated guy in town, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's tough. It, it'll be hard to, for me to recruit high school kids because it's hard to tell who's. You can have like out here, we have these powerhouse Catholic schools, and the Catholic schools can handpick. They can recruit. They can give scholarships. Yeah. Well, if you're playing Cypress High where I went, you know, it just who's ever in the neighborhood got a helmet on. That's a whole different dynamic. Right. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you know, it, it's it's not the same. Like Bryce Young, who lives in my neighborhood. Yeah. But Bryce Young went to Modern Day, and they say, I mean, you know, Matt Liner went to Modern Day. I mean, this these is a factory over at Modern Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 very well, it's it's different because you also, I mean, you don't see the uh uh, the the JUCO route necessarily the, the way that it was when when you played like it's it's just it, it, because these high schools have become essentially that type of 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 right. method right yes. like it, yes. these high schools have largely become like a farm system yes. that the, the JUCOs used to play exactly exactly I mean and well I mean I went to JUCO because I couldn't read to be honest <laughs> with you but. I didn't want to go to JUCO, but I got a scholarship <laughs> yeah. out of out of uh, out of high school to Hawaii, and I was so far behind because I was just fucking around, and I was I was messing around. And be honest with you, I was only playing football for girls. I really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't <laughs> I wasn't playing to do shit else. Honestly, yeah. My yeah. uh, game plan was the Air Force, and uh, after my tenth grade year. You know, this Oregon State coach came to look at a kicker. And he asked the coach, you think anybody can play Division One?" He says, well, I think Blaze can. And he pulled me out of class. I was like, oh, shit, what do I do now? <laughs> and, uh, he said, um, well, how are your grades, son? And I said, well, I get A's and B's. He said, really? Oh, well, yeah. Why are you so surprised? And uh, he said, well, you got a counselor? I said, yeah, that's my track coach. We go talk to my counselor. He says, Blaze says he gets A's and B's. He says, well, he does, but he's in remedial classes. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point on, I started taking all these college courses and going to community college at night. And I did everything I had to do. But I had to score 900 on the SAT. And I took it three times, I'm not going to lie to you. And the highest I got was like 882. So I could go to Hawaii and be Prop 48, or I could go to community college. So I'm like, if I go to Hawaii, I'm going to quit. So <laughs> I might as well go to community college. <laughs> 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 and that's how I ended up in community college. And that's when I really got serious about, like, myself, life, football, everything. Because there was a whole bunch of guys at community college that were, God, 22 to 25 that had already made all these horrible mistakes. And they kind of just took me by the by the arm and just kind of guided me in the right direction. Not well, do I, what they did. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, this seems like a really good segue. Uh, Chris has a special question that is going to be brought to you by uh, our, our friend Kyle Lehman at Wintrust Mortgage. Uh, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, ask this question. We'll get a word from, from Kyle, and we'll get Blaze's answer after that break. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you this question, Blaze, and then during the break, uh, you think of a good answer here. But I, I'm going to change the question up a little bit. NIL is, is a thing now. I, I want you to think about if NIL was around when you were in college, what what product are you are are you are you hawking? What 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 are you what are you selling? What what what's what's the item that you would want your name, image, and likeness on and, and, and get paid for? So we'll think about that, and then we'll come back with uh, with your answer. Okay. Are you in the market for a new house and unsure of the mortgage process? Want to know that you have someone looking out for you? Kyle Lehman from Wintrust Mortgage is a down-to-earth, knowledgeable lender who can be there for you in your corner. He can work with you in any of the 50 states and is just what you need to expand your home search. 
Kyle will work with you through the entire process with little to no work from you. Take the worry of the mortgage process out of the equation so that you can focus on looking for your dream home. Contact Kyle at www.wintrust.com forward slash Kyle dash Lehman or call him at 515-473-0546. All right. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Kyle. We appreciate uh, your support of Old Man Strength. Uh, on Three Beards Media, please go and check out all the other Three Beards Media podcasts. We have a lot of things, including uh, a one podcast, Side of the Storm, featuring uh, a, a gentleman that Blaze mentioned earlier, Marcus Pfizer, uh, with Brent Crevet, Brent Crevet and, and George Trice. They've had a lot of great guests on Brett Meyer, a bunch of other uh, uh, amazing former athletes on talking a lot about what coaching, what it, what it really means to to be a college coach, and what it really means to play for one of those college coaches. So please go and check out all the, the other thing, the other podcasts on. We have a bunch of new ones coming online as well. Chris is in like six different podcasts. If I'm you, not in six different podcasts. Uh, 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 well, you're uh, a lot of them. Anyway, so please go and check those out. So anyway, uh, Blaze. Um, it, let's say NIL was a thing, um, back in your day, uh, and forget the, uh, the, uh, Walden and or, um, Bartles and James commercials. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh what, You're going way back. yeah. Oh, th- those were a lot of fun. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, what product do you think would have best represented Blaze Bryant? Um, what would you have been proud to represent at the time? Is it a product? It's whatever you want it to be. Can I give two? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hickory Park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the Highlight Lounge in Des Moines. Look at that. I... Blaze, I'm going to send a note to Bruno. I'm going to cut this right now and send it to Bruno. Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, uh, <laughs> Blaze, uh, you, uh, one of my, my top five, uh, favorite players of all time, but to go high life lounge, I think you just moved up. <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm so in, in love with that place. I love the fact that they've had the same Farrah Fawcett, uh, poster in the bathroom, <laughs> uh, for well over a decade, like, like just the classic old school guy. And, and like, as, as a guy who's, in the adult beverage industry, that's one of those places that I think I have to send everyone to because you just need to be able to just enjoy the High Life Lounge. I would have. Is the I, every time I go, it's my first stop from the airport. Yeah. Coming yeah. and going. No, I, no, I love it. It's <laughs> it's it's perfect. That ah, oh, that makes me so happy. That, that was your answer. I just don't want to sound like a drunk, so I had to throw in hit the too. That's all right. You know, yeah, no, we no. Are sponsored. We are sponsored by a whiskey company. Yeah, okay, that's, so. that, that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You don't sound like a drunk. You sound like a glutton and a drunk for eating too much food <laughs> and then going. Uh, no, um, I do. How often do you make it back? God, not much. Not as much as I should. I want to say. Um, I think I came back after my first year when I was still with the Jets, and then I think I came back again until '03 when Seneca Walla beat Nebraska. And then 2011 when Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. And then 2016 when Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma beat the living shit out of us. Yeah. (laughs) And um, then it just um, the Big 12 championship at at Jerry's World and then the UNLV game, I think in 2021 in Vegas. Yeah, I was at that game too. Yeah, but. I need to get back. I was going to come back. You know, I told you my mom passed and I had a way to go to. And uh, But I'm going to go to the BYU game this year in um, at BYU. Nice. nice. That's like, I can get it like a quick little hour and 15 minute flight out of Long Beach. And if there the snow's go. right, I can get some snowboarding in too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I tell you what, Blaze. If if you if you make it back for a game, I'll drive down from Minneapolis. So I'll, I'll meet you up for a tailgate. We can we can uh, hit up some some Hickory Park and and maybe some High Life Lounge as well. Uh, fit it all in <laughs> the same weekend. But yeah, yeah. You, you you come back. We'll we'll make sure to to walk around and tailgate with you. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. You know, I was, when I was back in 2016. I parked across from my old neighbor, which was strange. 
And uh, then I parked next to Frank, the athletic trainer, when I was out there tailgating. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so so yeah. I, let, I brought it up at the top of the pod, and I wasn't going to bring it up again, but I have to because it comes like literally every single time your name has gotten mentioned on this podcast. I my so my my, my dad uh, would also. I remember my dad loving your hair. I have to bring it up. How much do people remember you just by your hair alone? Oh, God. Everybody. <laughs> Have you ever seen my high school picture? No. Oh, Mario. oh I need to see this. Can, can you bring my high school picture out? Oh, you got to see it. I mean, that's a good one. But my high school one will destroy it. Oh, oh. I mean, destroy it. Uh, it's I the can't. best one of all time. I, I will tell you, uh, there's a huge amount of the fandom that would love to see these jerseys come back and these throwbacks come back with that that logo and that color scheme. I personally think you guys had the best the best uniforms. Oh, that all black is good though. I, uh, yeah, they are. The yeah. all black and the all white is pretty. And I think the I and the state is the best one of all time. Really, really, love okay. it. Wow. Okay. No, uh, that, that's that's good. I mean, I, I mean, you, you're from that that kick and chicken era, right? Like, like the and uh, the, the script cyclones, the red script cyclone on the yellow helmet to me is going to always be the most kind of iconic for me because that's when, uh, you know, that's kind of the helmet I think of for some of the earliest victories that meant a lot to me. Um, I. There's some eras like Bird in a Blender that I would just, even though football was great, I don't like that. I don't. I didn't like the blue incorporated. I didn't like that whole thing. Uh, it's been a lot of brand changes throughout the year, but the the to have someone that loves the eye, that's kind of that's that's different. I, I like that though. Yeah, I like it. I think I think it's the coolest one I've seen. You know, um, I think when I was um, there's like a little club level. Mm -hmm. At Jack Tri Stadium, yeah, and it has every helmet in there, and I think one has Iowa State written on the side. I like that one too, but I do love, and it's hard to find. The old school champion Iowa State sweatshirt. It was oh, like yeah. sixty dollars when we were in school. It was expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The T Galaxy. That's Remember what that? Was. I'm like, who in the hell got sixty bucks for a sweatshirt? <laughs> Listen, the bookstore released some some Ames throwback yesterday. They want seventy six dollars for it. I was like, that's ridiculous. I can't. It's so hard to find those. And I've had them. Yeah. I think when I went back in '03, I bought like five, and I think I got one left. And my kids stole them all. Do you do you still <laughs> you still have a uh, Letterman jacket? Yeah. It's it's funny because I like. I mean, I haven't been back on campus in a while, but I see the players still wearing the same. It's the exact, like when my dad, like my dad's wrestling Letterman jacket from way back in the day, it's the exact same thing. Like that's the one thing that has not changed decade to decade to decade to decade is that Letterman jacket looks. Yeah. And it's heavy as hell too. <laughs> I actually, I actually have one. Somebody was selling one on Facebook marketplace. Really? I thought I'm going to buy that because God knows what will happen to it. And apparently, it was an ex girlfriend of an old football player that <laughs> to get him back. She he Wait. sold she sold his his Letterman jacket. I mean, it's it's a big, so, thick, heavy wool and leather. Oh my god! Oh, shut up! Oh my god! Uh, that is Blaze. Can, found it. Blaze, can you can you do me a favor? Can you send that to Chris so he can post that on social media for us? Oh yeah, think oh, that, You got to text that to me. Is and, that better than the one I was saying? That's uh, that's. How Whoa. much hair? How much hairspray is in there? Wait, what? What is? What is in there? What? Is, look! Look at there, huh? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, you gotta, yeah. you gotta send me those. Yeah. <laughs> that boy is sexy. I gotta look have at. those. You are, you are, you are, you are a brave, a brave man, Blaze. We, that is. We've got to have those. Uh, yes, I, I I've got to. I, 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 I got to. I gotta promote that. That that'll get us some listeners. I did. I did. <laughs> I did not realize Flock of Seagulls had that broad of an audience. That is. Oh, yeah. that that's, is... that's an old school one too. There, for there you. you go. Yeah. yeah see. Right? That, that's when it was nice and Aquanet was in it. 
You, you know what, Blaze? You just you just print that up, sign it, and send it to me. I'll put it down here in my basement. I'll put that right down here in the basement with all the other stuff. Oh, I think my I might goodness. have a photo of you down here somewhere. <laughs> I, 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 Blaze, I apologize. Like I, like again, uh, one of my all-time favorite uh, players at Iowa State. One of the first All-Americans I can remember. Like, like, just the legacy that you left at Iowa State and the way that you paved the way for so many great running backs after you. But I still cannot also forget. The legacy for great hair that you left I, I like you know. it, it it just it's it is the one thing when like you know we've had john walters on we, we we've mentioned it uh we've had a few different folks on and that one's still yeah denny says don't stand near any open flames with that hair <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> i was at lax one time and a brother screamed out patty the <laughs> 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 oh man oh my uh, god yeah i'm gonna need those other two photos blaze oh my god yeah. you should i was i got a picture of me and don hole my hawaii recruiting out of high school he looking at me like who is this dude oh my god that's oh uh, in in uh, hawaii yeah i can't i can only imagine the humidity in hawaii with that right now. Uh, <laughs> um well, 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 Blaze, we boy. don't want to take we don't want to take up too much more time, but we do have one very last segment that we want to go ahead and and uh, uh, bring to our listeners. I'm going to let Chris go ahead and talk about what this last segment yeah, is. Yeah. So, well, before I get into this, Blaze, I just want to uh, I, I want to thank you. I, I've been a big fan of yours ever since I was 18 years old and, and on campus watching you. So, this has been a, a real pleasure to be able to sit down and talk to you. Uh, I can't thank you enough for that. So, oh, appreciate it. Thanks for inviting uh, me. This next segment is uh, in honor of Steph Copley, who uh, one time told Tim and I to shut the fuck up so that she could she could get uh, get her words in. And in honor of that, we always play a little clip and invite people to uh, to donate to the Young Women's Resource Center in her name. So I'm gonna play this, and then when we come back, Tim and I are gonna shut the fuck up, and you can say whatever you want. The floor is yours. So uh, let's get a word here, and then uh, we'll come back with Blaze. Hey everybody, it's Steph Copley, the woman behind the STFU segment on the Old Man Strength Podcast. When I told the guys I wanted to sponsor this segment, they recommended that I make a charitable donation instead, so that's what I did. I chose the Young Women's Resource Center in Des Moines, Iowa. They're a nonprofit that supports, educates, and advocates for girls and young women ages 10 to 24. Their whole goal is to make sure that these young women become strong, self-confident, and successful. And if you know me at all, you know that aligns with my goals as well. If you're interested and would like to donate, check them out at ywrc.com org and donate today and remember don't forget to stfu and listen every once in a while thanks okay with, yeah with this that is, blaze the floor is yours i would like to thank iowa state just for always uh i guess just always being there for me always recognizing me you know whenever i come back you know they want me to be on tv or the radio or something and uh, for the people that, you know, send me the cards and I always sign them and send them back to you. I just like to thank Iowa State from the bottom of my heart for letting a little young brother in from California that never seen the snowfall, you know, and embracing me the way they have for over 30 years. I I think that's, that's great. That's very beautiful, uh, man. I, uh... This is a conversation that has been 30 plus years in the making for me. Uh, certainly, uh, I, you know, I, I told my dad, I told my nephew, I told cousins that I was going to be able to talk to, to you. Cause it's, you know, my cousin, Matt went to Iowa state with me at the same time. We were all very excited, uh, ab about you and, and your career. So, uh, this is, uh, one of the few times we've been able to talk to someone at Iowa state where I've been legitimately just kind of struck by by a, a child you know a, a, a young legend anyway i guess so i i very much appreciate that i'm, I'm really glad you took the time oh, uh but, but i i really uh uh i really admire everything that you've done since as well uh um uh man i really hope you you wouldn't mind coming back on sometime or or uh or joining us for any any kind of special things we might do because it, it's just been a blast having you on 
appreciate it. Thank you. I'll, I'll come on again. Sometimes my schedule and my brain is not right. So. <laughs> <laughs> All those damn hits. It's that hit from the back. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's, that's that lack that's, of water. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the old man and old man strength. I got to tell you, right. yeah. Right. But I appreciate you guys having me on, and um, I'll get my assistant to keep me on time and make sure she keeps me in the office. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Blaze, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. You too. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, listener, that that is what we have. Once again, you have spent. This has been actually a very great hour and a half spent. I, uh, I'm not even going to disparage Chris and I on this because we had a, had a wonderful guest. We thank you very much for listening to old man strength brought to you by three beards media, uh, and Revelton distilling company. Please once again, check out all of the podcasts. We're growing like mad at three beards media. So I don't even have time to talk about all the podcasts that we have. We have some new ones that I want you to go and check out some great things in the works. Chris, do you want to highlight something in particular? Well, we did make uh, our donations to the uh, to the We Will Collective uh, in honor of women's sports. We made a two hundred dollar uh, donation to them for the T shirts that we sold. So we're going to relaunch those here uh, in a couple of days uh, and see if we can raise some more money for NIL for the women's athletes. So really proud of that. So love yep. women's sports. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, with that, listeners. Thank you very much, and we will see you guys next time. Okay.